Okay, let's start here. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am Jiaying, a postdoc advised by Prof. Ming. And today I'm delighted to share with you our ideas on large language models for social simulation with its progress, opportunities, and challenges in an ideal world. Okay, so let's first start with like, the, the social intelligence capabilities of large language models. So as we know, as the large language models continue to scale, they are also continuously unlock new capabilities. Let's take the Palm 2 model from Google as an example. So like on the 62 billion parameters version, it unlocks some fundamental abilities such as question answering, arithmetic, and summarization. However, we see that as it scales to a larger version containing 540 billion parameters, it's suddenly like the, the tree of capabilities grow a lot. And we see a lot of new capabilities such as common sense reasoning, joke explanations, physics Q, and so on. And though we may ask how far has this today's gener latest generation of large language models go in terms of social intelligence, so here is like a working paper from Stanford University released the last month, gives some preliminary ideas to this. So they derive predictions from large language model social simulations and try to see if they could actually replicate the results of using real human subjects in social experiments. This is how they do it. So the set of survey materials, including like stimuli and outcome measures, for a large language models, they provide them with a specifically demographic, uh, a specific demographic profile to replicate each of the actual human participants. As we see in the prompt format, we may say, okay, you are a liberal a, with a certain age, a certain race, a certain gender. And like the page of survey says these questions and you could give your responses. So then the large language models will generate the chosen response. And after they get a sufficiently large set of responses from demographically diverse profiles, they'll use them to aggregate and on a high level estimate the treatment effects from the large language model responses and compare them with the actual treatment effects of social science experiments. So the data they use is 70 text-based social science experiments conducted in the US. Among them, 50 are collected from the test project and 20 are unpublished results, totaling a number of 476 treatment effects. The method is to prompt a large language model such as GPT-4 to simulate over 100,000 uh, research participants' response to the experimental stimuli given a set of specific individual profiles. So to reduce format bias, they also randomly sample from a sufficiently large pool of prompt templates and average over the prompts. So from these... Uh, yes, this So maybe I'll just walk over here. So we see that uh, the, on these four figures, they summarize the main results of the experiment. First, we show that on all of the 70 studies, the GPT-4 predicted treatment effects highly align with the actual treatment effects. Secondly, like comparing the performance of different models, we can see as large language models uh, continue to evolve from GPT-3 to GPT-4, like the model performance uh, aligns better, much better with that of uh, actual human experiment results. And then to understand if large language models are actually predicting these results or if they're simply retrieving data from the training corpus, they're also uh, only limited the analysis to the 20 unpublished Exper uh, unpublished studies, and they find that surprisingly, the results still stayed highly consistent. And for this, so this is a correlation by different specifications, such as unpublished authors not recognized by GPT, and then for different 
uh, disciplines such as sociology, psycholo psychology, and political science, they find that overall the results of a different subgroups stayed relatively robust. So in summary, the observation would be the large language model estimates of treatment effects are strongly correlated with the original treatment effects with regard to both size and direction. So next, we move on to how do we leverage large language models for social simulation, both from an individual level point of view of persona simulation and the population level point of view of social behavior and interaction simulation. Okay, so in the next section, we see how do we actually leverage large language models to simulate individual and population level social behavior. So let's start with like how can we uh, prompt or instruction team large language models to role play different characters, say characters from cartoons or say certain films that are representative and the model knows about. So let's first start with like the simplest form of non-parametric prompting, which is like giving the model in-context demonstrations of how the character would react or say just to, to use retrieval augmentation based on a large corpus of the character's previous dialogues that we could retrieve from the web or elsewhere. So for instance, here is a prompt template that's saying, okay, you are a certain role and you have a certain description. And now I could give a question, under your role, how would you respond? So there's also like another choice of parametric tuning, which allows us to empower smaller large language models to like match or even surpass the performance of state-of-the-art large language models such as GPT-4 on the real plane task. So for instance, I assume like we start with having some script to generate a role profile. And from the role profile, we can get like two types of knowledge. The first one is to just say, instruct the model with the role profile alongside some potential retrieved dialogues from a curated corpus of the uh, role's past dialogues. And another way to learn better about the role specific knowledge is to actually generate a list of questions to ask the simulated roles. For instance, say, assume you are Sherlock Holmes, how would you react? Uh, how do you feel about a certain event? So here the model, the, uh, we make sure that, say, for each question, the model has a high confidence of the answer. That means, for instance, the question is precise and that it is actually relevant to the character we want to know about. So based on this, we can actually get a corpus. So both the questions and say how they will like uh, role specific uh, QA pairs. So then say we tune a smaller chat GLM or say Llama model with only six or seven billions of parameters. And we can correctly like change the response from a generic say how's the weather it's sunny or warm today to like this character in my little pony like, oh, it's a splendid sunfield day. So then we may wonder, like uh, comparing smaller models and larger models, like what is the effect? How effective is this instruction tuning? So here is a representative experiment. So the smaller models are instruction tuned on our previously mentioned corpus. And then we also have a zero shot or few shot real GPT, which is not trained to the task. It is just a GPT-4 model that we are sure has some knowledge about the character. So the work makes the two findings. The first one is like in smaller large language models, when we just use this uh, system instruction, which means we just tell it, uh, give it a profile. So it performs better than when we try to instruction, instruction tell it with retrieved dialogues. So potential reason is that retrieved examples from our vast set of dialogues can be noisy and sparse, which may sleep the generation process. So for larger language models such as GPT-4, we find that the performance using both retrieval augmentation and system prompts is similar. 
That means the model, as it grows larger, exhibits greater robustness that can sufficiently like counteract the uh, like can sufficiently counteract the noisy and sparse uh, variability induced by the implementation process. So overall, the observation is even given a small language, a uh, smaller large language model, if we are able to instruction tuning using abundant task specific data on the real playing task, it can still like uh, say on this uh, root L metric surpass large language models in persona simulation. So those from individual level, we might further want to like go on a higher level and see how can large language models simulate what is actually happening in a social network, for instance, when people discuss about a controversial event. So this, uh, I'm like breaking down this figure into different phases to facilitate understanding. So step one is we get some real social network data. So based on the real social network data, we get some say users, like the existing messages and the following and follower relations, relationships. And also we could from the real data obtain like the demographics and the users profiles, for instance, what is the memory of each simulated user? So by turning them uh, like uh, putting them through a large language model empowered agent, we can gather each user's internal state, namely, say, emotion and attitude, and add them to the memory set so that it could continue to evolve. So then these internal states include emotions such as calm, moderate, intense, or attitudes such, like, such as support and the refute. So then given the internal states, we wonder, okay, given this, certain emotion and attitude, how the user actually responds by generating content. So then it's like, uh, they have a content generation module, which is another large language model. So upon receiving a message from one of the users, they follow is. So then the user interactive behavior is elicited based on this generation module, which could be either like, like this content, forwarding content, commenting, or like inspired by this content, they generate something else. So the generated uh, content is merged into this environment for environmental updates. It's also merged into this memory, which is like uh, follows up with the user's latest emotions and attitudes. So this uh, allows for like a sequential steps of simulation, like sequential updates to the system. So then we might wonder, okay, so firstly, how accurate and what is the quality of the generated content by large language models? So the experiments, they focus on two scenarios, namely like discussions about nuclear energy and gender discrimination. And they, on the social level, they similar to three phenomena, such as info pro information propagation patterns, like how widespread is it, the attitude of the aggregated users and the emotion. So firstly, we see how far can large, how much can large language models demonstrate individual level simulation capabilities. So here we find that large language model empowered simulation can actually predict emotions, attitudes, and behaviors to a not very high but still reasonable accuracy. And then secondly, we find that the content generated by large language simulations in terms of say perplexity, we could find that it also reflects that the generated, a user gen simulated user generated content is of moderate quality. And then moving on to population level, specifically here's an example plot of say the reach of the event and also the aggregated emotion elicited. So we find that the simulated curves also like align pretty well with what we actually observe in the real world social media. 
So this demonstrates that the large language model also has like a certain, to some extent, they're able to demonstrate population level social media behavior as well. So then we may ask, so given these capabilities of large language models, how could these role-playing behavior and the social simulation behavior actually benefit practical applications? So there are three examples. The first one is say, using large language model simulated patients to facilitate health professional training. So you see like you could train health professionals such as say the psychologists, the mental health professionals. It really requires a lot of patient data, which can be very hard to collect. So of course we can also say that other human subjects simulate patients. They're still rather in effect, like uh, inefficient. So uh, in a recent work, researchers, uh, researchers find that large language models could simulate reasonable patients that benefit the training of these experts. So the method is that for like mental health, a very uh, a fundamental element is to infer the cognitive model of the patient, such as if the patient's core beliefs, automatic thoughts, and the coping strategies, and so on. So if we could accurately infer this uh, cognitive model, then it's like demonstrate uh, like it could contribute to the success the success of the training. This is how uh, the model actually does. So con consider this one is a large language model, which tells a trainee like his uh, the model's concerns, and then from the model's concerns, the trainee can infer a cognitive model. So then we could actually compare the trainee's model with the actual cognitive model that we used to prompt the large language model to simulate patients. And such comparisons if by uh, training the training to accurately infer the predefined cognitive model that will help in the tr professional training. So secondly, like maybe a little bit more uh, related to iGyro is how could we use large language model to simulate users to facilitate fake news detection? So this is a recent work from CIKM. So the thing is that there are a lot of existing work using comments from social users to aggregate crowd wisdom, which could be used to judge the veracity of the original news content. The problem is like collecting these user uh, comments can also be like very costly, both in terms of resource and time. So can we use large language models to also say, facilitate the detection of fake news? This is how the authors do. So this is a frozen large language model, such as GPT 3.5 or 4, and then they provide the model with different demographic profiles and prompt them to generate responses, comments to the news. And then based on different like gender, uh, so the demographic view is built upon three um, representative aspects, which I think can be limited, but like, still they prove they are, have some consistent performance gains. So like expanding this profile could be left for future work. So from gender, age, and education, they get different like multi-demographic view of different subpopulations, and then actually fuse these latent representations into the detector to like uh, provide more user knowledge to facilitate the detection pro process. And they prove that say coupled with a wide range of existing text-based detectors, the model could achieve consistent performance gains. And then this one is like the third application is more general. How could we use large language model simulated personas simply for scalable synthetic data generation, but not limited to certain application? 
So there are two ways we could do so. The first one is consider text to persona, like how could we create a sufficiently large set of personas? Firstly, we could use some text as input to obtain some corresponding personas. For instance, here I could give different text we can just from the large language model, okay, for instance, this is the introduction of how an attention function works. So what type of people are likely to like or dislike such? Or like, for instance, given a list of uh, maybe games here. So we ask, okay, consider a person's favorite game is something. So then it uh, to like, what are the likely identities of such users? So by doing so, we could get a sufficiently large set of personas. And if we even want to like uh, expand it more, we can also uh, step upon the text to persona initial set to a later persona to persona method, which is like obtaining diverse personas via some interpersonal relationships. For instance, here is a persona of a pediatric nurse. Through a large language model, we want to ask, okay, what relations might be the nurse uh, in currently? So there may be like medical suppliers, patients, and their colleagues in the hospitals. So these further like expand our set of personas, which allows us to get in touch or elicit the large language model's understanding of a wider range of world knowledge by different specialists. So then we create data with different persona. For instance, here we have the simulated persona of a moving company driver. And we want to, from their perspective, like. For instance, this is a QA task for designing problems. So what problems will this simulated moving driver be interested in? So then for the math problem, it might be, okay, so we want to deliver a furniture. So then will the driver be needing a refuel during the trip? Or say like if it were a logical reasoning problem and we might ask, okay, there are certain items, so how does the driver arrange the items in the track? So it's like we have some uh, predefined set of personas and also predefined set of question types, like the question types of interest. And we could elicit, like, synthesize a sufficiently large set of questions based on the diverse aspects posed by different personas which could be used to facilitate model training, for instance, specifically on math problems like real-world math or say real-world logical reasoning. So this is say, how we could expand this synthesis, uh, data synthesis process by both like the persona range and also the problem range. And then like coming to the final section, which is like the opportunities and challenges from an IGIRO perspective. So I'm mainly breaking it down into different TDs, but for like RS1, RS3, there's also possibilities of using it. For instance, like RS1 for consumer behaviors. What if we simulate consumers with large language models and say for RS3 for Say, how can we inform the design of different regulations? So we want to assess the effect. So before we move on to real human subjects, how about we just use some uh, like convenient off-the-shelf large language models for a basic estimation? So like going a bit more in depth on like different TDs in the IS2. So first one is for TD1, which is like how can we effectively distinguish truth from falsity in digital media? So like returning to this like large language model simulated user approach, we find that actually like the predefined user profiles are lacking quite a bit in terms of dimensions or attributes. So in practice, like we might want to better define and uh, we might want to better define the set of persona to better simulate proud wisdom. For instance, we might be interested in like uh, politics news and then say uh, 
celebrity news. So can we say first determine the type of content we are trying to uh, we are trying to detect or so we are trying to fact check. And then to what the topic of that piece of content, we generate personas accordingly instead of getting some predefined a predefined template for all. It's like trying to adaptively generate these with regard to the actual content. So it's like, uh, this is how firstly we might seek to improve its effectiveness. So apart from effectiveness, we might also want to conduct, say, uh, debunking explanations that will help human practitioners to say, okay, why is this model thinking this is fake news or this news is misleading? So large language model simulated reasoning processes can also be elicited for a human readable response to actually inform humans of this part. And then moving on to the TD2 for resilience in the dissemination of digital information. So here, like, we might ask how does we see different types of information disseminate in like social media scenarios. So the research question here would be like, how can we actually leverage large language models simulated social interactions to help inform, say, recommendation and search, search strategies that are actually sensitive to the user's tolerance for like information diversity? So here, like, uh, one part of the uh, opportunities is that a recent research has shown that large language models can generate structurally realistic social networks given a list of personas. So I could briefly summarize their findings here. So they find that the most effective version is say we give them a list of personas, but we start with each one. Say given the first persona, here's a list of another 100 personas in the network who are you likely to say connect with or collaborate with. And then they also like uh, iteratively update the persona with the, what the current network looks like. So this is more effective than say giving the model a huge set of persona, letting them generate everything all at once, or say letting personas to uh, each persona to determine their actions independently without knowing what the current network looks like. So anyway, like from this, we could consider to simulate the effect of, say, recommendation strategies to reward or penalize the model accordingly, like to relate with regard to how users in the network are actually responding to this piece of news. For instance, if I were working on a recommender system, so after I recommend it to a diverse set of users, how is this information actually propagating in this diverse social media? How are users actually changing in terms of emotions and attitudes toward it? So that may be used to, de uh, to design a reward or a penalty score that leads to models. Reasoning process, kind of like process evolution. And another part for Rexis is like, I think there are code start issues where like a lot of items just pop up without any existing like history interactions. So here we might use a large language model or like even more effectively uh, kind of tune a smaller large language model to the task, specifically to say, okay, here is a certain piece of item so what kind of users are likely to interact with it? So for instance, we have a kind of a label data set here that we know like what kind of users will actually interact with it and then tune the model on this set of data. And then it could be adapted to a wider set of fresh items without any prior uh, interactions. And then for TD3, we might say, okay, how can we empower digital resilience through like exploration reasoning? Here, like the research question I envision would be say, how could we elicit like personalized messages from large language models to reduce misleading effects of say misinformation, disinformation individuals? And how can we empower individuals with the capability to perform some deeper analysis on the issues of interest? 
So again, recent findings show that say, uh, if I were a user who believes in conspiracy theory, so after the large language model identifies which conspiracy theory the user is believing in, after a three round conversation with targeted, uh, like targeted evidence to counteract such like uh, conspiracy theory, they actually see like the user's belief in the conspiracy theory can drop by 20% on average. So this one is very interesting because it suggests like whether we could find out, okay, so what based on the users, I won't say demographics because that's a bit sensitive, it's just on maybe inferring like the user's traits, for instance, which uh say persuasive tech uh persuasive uh, techniques might be more useful based on the user's inferred characteristics. I'll say like uh, we could even like uh, start after we have a system, say this persuasive system, we can also like trial test, uh, trial test it with some large language models to facilitate system design. So again, it's like some sort of process supervision. So how could we optimize the process of trying to effectively persuade different individuals and make them more digitally resilient? However, we find that there's still one remaining challenge is that when large language models are assigned a persona, the underlying bias can resurface. So for instance, consider this scenario. If we just ask chat GTT, okay, who is that a bad problem? Is it a physically disabled person or able-bodied person? The GTT model like on zero shot without any training will say, okay, there must be no inherent advantage or disadvantage. But if we would tell the GTT that you were a physically, you are a physically disabled person. So say here is a question, can you solve it? Then the GPT might reduce to, okay, sorry, I cannot solve it. So it also like, uh, it might be like, this one also applies to other sensitive issues such as say, like uh, different ethnicities. So this one is actually like, uh, after this persona, like all of the bias suddenly that the model pretends it doesn't have might resurface. So that might be a problem because it seemingly steals the model's predictions. So one possible solution would be uh, part of the reason I could say this disabled person is driving down the performance or the disabled person's simulation is driving down the performance of math problem solving. So I'll say, the two attributes that are quite unrelated. So consider if we could disentangle these. For instance, uh, if we were to conduct a simulation, we only do so like via some task relevant attributes instead of saying these task irrelevant attributes say because we already know physically disabled person has nothing to do like, with the reduced math problem solving capabilities. Or say like we could instruction tune the model and synthesize the data, like the role playing data, to explicitly tell the model that it is not supposed to output different responses. So it's like trying to train this rootlessness into the model. So that concludes my talk. So here is a curated reading list uh, containing all of the papers and even some more paper lists and talks. Uh, relevant to this talk. Thank you.